there's Toby Gerhardt. He gets the touchdown. The junior, also a member of the baseball team. Six 100-yard rushing games this season already, but that seven was huge. A couple of big plays, obviously. Howell's 27-yard reception. Pritchard's 40-yard scramble. Jim Harbaugh's squad is up by seven. And now USC will get there for the first possession of the ball game. Now Stanford, we talk about USC being able to get the touchback. That has not been a luxury for Zagary of Stanford. He only has one touchback in 30 kickoffs. This will be C.J. Gable from the four, looking for the wall. Check that, Johnson. He has some room. Breaks through into the secondary. Still on his feet. He may go. Cut from behind of the 24-yard line by Thaddeus Chase. Well, Rod, you talked about it. The touchback is a luxury, but Ronald Johnson is that big play back a wide receiver for USC and you can see keep it in the middle let everyone get their angles on their blocks and then it's just speed to try to take it as far as you possibly can but this is the answer right here if, you, if you're USC Stanford got off to a great start if you want to be the champion you have to respond immediately he's already number seven on the all-time kickoff return mark for USC 75 yards on that return Sanchez first pass rolling out throwing his receiver fell down incomplete USC offense two of the last three games they've had problems scoring only 17 points but you look at Sanchez both Pete Carroll and offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian say they're very pleased with the job Mark Sanchez has done he's completing 75 percent of his passes and they say, listen, we can't complain of what he's done for this team. Absolutely. And what he does is he executes the game plan, whether it's throw a little and be efficient and accurate or throw a lot. He executes it very, very well. Five wide receivers. They get it to Johnson. And he is going to be stood up right at the 21 yard line. Let's take a look at the line for USC. Jeff Byers at the left guard spot. He is going to set the tone for this offensive line. He is one of the most versatile linemen for USC. The skill vision, Gable, of course, is going to get the start, but we will see Joel McKnight combine them with Turner and Williams. All of those guys are game breakers. And this is where USC's offense, Ron, has stumbled a little bit. They've been inconsistent in the red zone. They score a bunch of touchdowns when they get down here, but they don't get down here near enough, and they're not efficient when they do. Williams and Johnson wide to the left. On third down, three-step drop. The look in, incomplete. No penalty flag. It'll be fourth down. Damian Williams was the intended receiver. Very nice coverage by number 24, the defensive back, Chris Evans, breaking on that ball. It was just a simple slant. Three by one, they have Williams isolated outside, and a very good break by Evans. And here's David Beeler again. This summer, he worked on his flexibility specifically tied to his hips and it's really increased his field goal kicking this year six of seven 23 of 27 for his career and USC making a late sub they only have three to snap it they're gonna have to burn a timeout oh my Blake Locke was going wow. down they had one less player had to run on the field We've got a timeout for Pete Carroll. Time now for our pod-busting flashback presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. As a more than 40-point underdog, the Stanford Cardinal faced a 4th and 20 late in the fourth quarter, trailing USC by six. QB Tavita Pritchard was determined to keep Stanford's upset hopes alive. What happens next? You make the call. Richard completed a 20-yard pass to Richard Sherman, and later followed it up with a 10-yard touchdown to Mark Bradford. The Cardinal held on to stun USC 24-23. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. And USC will be attempting the field goal. White Neck, the punter, is the holder. It'll be right inside the, uh, about the 27-yard line. So it'll be a 37-yard kick. One for two. This season from that distance, from the right hash. Good snap, good hold. 
That'll split the uprights. So Beeler with his seventh field goal of the year, and it's a 7-3 ball game, 9.50 left to play in the opening quarter. Of course, last year there were a number of heroes, but none it's bigger than the man that's standing by with Lewis Johnson right now. Lewis? Yeah, Mark Bradford is the guy that caught that 10-yard pass from Tavita Pritchett. It was a big moment. Hey, why don't you take us back? It was one of the incredible upsets of college football history and, and, and the catch, and just what do you remember about it? Uh, man, what I remember about it is going out there, uh, knowing the ball was coming to me because I saw the single coverage. Um, when I got out there, uh, and here it is. <laughs> yeah, when I got out there, I looked up and everything kind of slowed down. Uh, look, watching it on film, everything kind of speeds up. But <laughs> we, we, when it really happened, man, it got real quiet. I, I felt the crowd, like, you know, everybody take a breath. Um, and when I went up in the air, I just knew I had to come down with it. You know? now, now, you gave the ball to the referee. How long did it take for you to realize, oh, my gosh, that's a ball I'd like to keep? No, I was so happy about the catch, man. I didn't realize it until I got to the sideline. Uh, and, then the guy, and then I remember somebody asking me, uh, did you get the ball? Did you get the ball? I'm like, oh, no, I almost went down to my knees, man. It was, it was bad. <laughs> All right, well, look, great memory and enjoy. And congratulations on signing with the 49ers. I guess it's great for you to be here at home, right? Yeah, man, I love the Bay Area, man. I'm loving it back home, and I'll be able, be able to be around my support system and uh, the, the, my teammates that are still around. All right, thanks so much, Mark. All right, let's look for that ball. Huh? What do you say? Okay, <laughs> okay guys. All right, thanks, Lewis. This is an oddity. Beeler's kick is going to be short. It's going to be a Wusu from about the seven, and he gets tripped up. But he vaults his way up to the 24-yard line. Campbell on the stop. Stanford will take over their second possession. This Stanford offense, you know, you, we were talking to Jim Harbaugh yesterday, and, and a lot of people say, well, it's a spread. And, and Jim basically told us, we really don't have a system. Our system is just move the ball and score, and that's because of his personnel. Right. And they, they do a very good job from week to week of having really a totally new game plan, kind of West Coast derivatives or principles, that, but there's a lot of flexibility, formations and motions and different personnel groupings. Step drop into the flat, pass is caught. Whalen up over the 30 to the 34 yard line. This is what they Stanford has to do more of today. Be willing to throw on first down to keep that USC defense off guard just a little bit. And Whalen's that guy that Pritchard is very, very comfortable with. He's the possession guy. Mm -hmm. He catches everything, runs dependable routes. A quarterback can count on a guy like Whalen. That was good enough for a first down. They gave him 11 on the catch. First and 10 on the 34-yard line again for the Cardinals. Their second possession of the ball game. Gerhardt bounces out to the left side, tries to make a move, oversteps one guy, and goes out of bounds past the 40 up to the 42-yard line. Week to week, you need yeah. an explanation. Second down at two, Pritchard. He's going to do the wise thing and throw this into the SC bench. Pass was intended for the tight end, Jim Dre, incomplete. And that's a good decision by a quarterback, especially early in this game. You have to avoid those situations, Ron, and really those plays where you have the potential to get your team in trouble, and that's one of them right there. Tavita Pritchard has to throw the ball away, line up to play another down, and that's a good mm -hmm. sign for Jim Harbaugh early in this game. Well, they talk about, we talked about him learning the nuances of the game. That's part of those nuances, when to get rid of it. Third down and three. Inside of nine minutes to play in the opening quarter, moving the pocket. Rolls out. Nice defensive play. Josh Pinkard with the deflection. He did a great job on the coverage. And Stanford will be forced to kick it away. USC in their nickel package on that play right there, Ron. And Josh Pinkard is their corner, but in nickel, he comes in and plays the slot and played it extremely well on that play. Stephon Johnson standing back inside his 20 yard line at his 19, awaiting the kick of David Green, the redshirt freshman out of Mission Viejo, California. And the left footer shanks it off the side of his foot. Probably try to kick away from Johnson, but he still feels it. And he is going to be stood up at the 15-yard line. 42 yards on the kick, nothing on the return. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Hey, Rod, you know, we talked earlier in the game about Toby Gerhardt not being able to go to L.A. last year, travel with the team to that big matchup, the big upset in the Coliseum. Well, he was actually at a barbecue with some of his baseball buddies when they watched the game, saw the end, jumping and screaming, and Gerhardt knew the itinerary of the team, and so he was overweighting it. When they walked out on the street, look at what they found. Thousands of Stanford students waiting on the buses to come back from Los Angeles, and when they did, 
The word is is that the uh, team was stormed. Folks went crazy. Bonfire broke out. It was incredible. <laughs> they weren't expecting that as C.J. Gable slips right as he gets to the line of scrimmage. The sophomore out of California. Chica Amajoy is the one who was stretching the play out. You know, when you look at this USC offense, and I think, Kelly, you and I were talking about it yesterday, you have to ask yourself, who are they? Yeah. Are they a run team? Are they a pass team? Are they a spread team? And I think that's, well, that's the question a lot of people have been asking. I think season. you're right. I think that is the question on that first series, three passes and then kick the field goal. And here they come out running. I think they have to decide what mix they want to get into here this evening. Now they do have four running backs, and Stephon Johnson is one of them. This time it's going to be Johnson. And he gets up to the 25 yard line. That'll be about three yards short of the first down. But we will see four, possibly five running backs. And talking to the coaches, Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, he says, We just try to go the one with the hot hand. Yeah, the one with the hot hand is going to get more carries. That makes sense. But they're different skill set. Joe McKnight is more of the Fiari. He's the, he doesn't pass protect. He's the route runner. And we've already seen Gable, who really is the best combination of all of that. Third down and three. They'll go with four wide receivers as Gable goes in motion. Stanford shows a blitz. Here they come. And Sanchez goes down, and he loses the football. The officials will have to see who's got it. And I think it'll belong to USC. Ron, this is exactly what Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator of Stanford, told us they wanted to do. Overload blitzes, and the overload was to the right side of, of USC's offense, and there just isn't enough to block all of them right there. It needs to be better recognition at the oh. quarterback position, and that ball has to come out. Max Bergen, a redshirt freshman out of East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, is the one who made the hit. And here is Greg Whitenick's punt. Doug Baldwin backs up to his 33. Wall was set up right. He's not going anywhere. 47 yards on the kick. Nice defensive stand by the Cardinal. They have the football leading 7 to 3. And for a beautiful drive, especially the weather we're having right now, we welcome you back to college football uh, versus Stanford and USC. And tonight's game is brought to you in HD by Pioneer. And Ron, the one thing right now that Stanford is doing effectively, especially on that first drive there, they're winning on first down. And you have to against this Trojan defense. 5.6 yards on first down thus far in the game. That sets them up for better opportunities on second and third down. Let's see if they loosen them up a little bit, though, on first down, because Stanford's getting the M.O. of running about 60 to 80 percent of the time on first down. Gerhardt weaving his way. He is elusive. He doesn't look like he's running that fast. But on that play, for instance, he picks up almost seven yards. With more on Toby Garrett. But he's got that right hamstring that's been a problem. I'm going to keep a close eye on him to see if there's any medical attention. But maybe it's an issue. We'll have to see. All right, we'll keep an eye because Kimball has already come in for a play or two. Gerhardt stays in on second down and four. Richard, no pressure, plenty of time. Looking down the sideline, pass is dropped. Intended for Chris Owusu. The true freshman out of Westlake Village, California. And Awusu was the motion guy. He went to the flat and then turned it up. Somewhat like a wheel route for a running back out of the backfield. Pritchard almost got it in there, but there wasn't a whole lot there. Very well covered yeah. by USC. Taylor Mays was right there and Josh Binkert. You're not going to get a whole lot from <laughs> those two guys. Yeah, if Taylor Mays would have had another step, he would have knocked uh, yeah. Owusu into the bleachers. Now Austin Gunder, normally a tight end, is split out wide to the right on third down and four. Gerhardt alone in the backfield. And he's got the football, looks for a block, gets it. Puts his head down and he is stood up. My goodness, we talked about Taylor Mays rocking your world. Ray Maulu and Taylor Mays hit him, but I think he still got the first down. Yeah, Taylor Mays is the free safety that runs the alley, especially when you get the quick look, which means the ball is in the air on the pitch. Number two, Taylor Mays just has to run the alley and wait for Gerhardt oh. to show off. And oh my, oh. does he bring the wood? You talked about his size, 6'3", 230, but he does run like oh. a defensive back. Dad Stafford played in the National Football League, was a defensive end, Taylor Mays' dad. Now Anthony Kimball comes in as Gerhardt goes out. First and ten. Kimball gets to the outside. Gets a block from Whalen and he's able to get inside the 40 down to the 36-yard line. Pinkard pushes him out, his third stop of the evening. 
And Ron, this is what Kimball brings to this offense. A little bit more speed, especially if he can get quickly to the edge. Another thing to keep your eye on, what you notice right now with USC's defense, they aren't taking very good angles. About every other time, they're a step behind because they're not taking good angles, especially at the second level, linebacker, third level from the secondary. Mark Sanchez can only watch. They have not been effective offensively. 134 yards for Stanford in this opening quarter. We still have five minutes left. First time, the Trojan defense stacking up the runner inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Kimball, nowhere to go. How about that? 27 yards rushing allowed last week versus Cal tonight. 99 yards rushing. Once again, only one team has gone over 100 yards. That was Oregon State. Arizona did rush for exactly 100. Now they're only giving up a little less than 80 yards, like 77.8 yeah. per game on the season. So there haven't been a lot of holes there, but you see him here tonight. Very well played thus far up front on Stanford's behalf. And Stanford also running time off the clock, too, which is also a good thing. Gerhardt is back in. Pritchard looks left to the safety valve. Inside the 30-yard line and the 28-yard line is Doug Baldwin. Third down and two from the I formation. Gerhardt gets close to the 25-yard line. He had to get just inside the 26. Malaluga came up with the first hit. And if they're marking it there, it'll probably be a first down. Yeah, I think they're going to move the chains. And I asked Toby Gerhardt yesterday, Ron, in our meeting with him, is describe your running style. And he said, I'm physical and I finish runs. And that's a good example yeah. of how he finishes runs right there. Move the chains. Stanford now with six first downs. Zero for USC. First and ten. Balls on the 26-yard line. Already leading seven to three. Gerhardt leaps over the defender. Able to get down to the 23-yard line. Stanford runs a lot of their running game out of the two-back system. The true fullback that's in there right there. And Mary Sec. And then you have obviously the big body back behind him in Gerhardt and that's the physical nature that Jim Harbaugh wants time and time again wear a team out and it proves to benefits and dividends in the fourth quarter and it starts with the big guys up front second down and seven this time Kimball just to the left and he's got the ball finds a little hole nice stick arm Able to get down to the 19-yard line, about three and a half short of the first down. Bill Harris on the stop. You know, we talk about that offensive line for Stanford. In last year when we were talking to Jim Harbaugh, I said, listen, we don't know what we have on the offensive line. Our guys have to block with more finesse. This year, watching tape and watching them tonight, I think they're getting a little more physical than they were last season. Yeah, and I think they're learning how to run the zone running scheme up front, which is basically a double team on the line of scrimmage, and then one guy or the other comes off to that second level. You don't have to be finessing that. You can bring a physical nature to that running scheme as well. On third down, Gerhardt, this time he's going to be dragged behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose about a half a yard, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Will Harris coming up from that safety spot to make the tackle. Ron, I think that's that down and distance, especially in the red zone, where Stanford's going to have to be willing to throw the football tonight or at least demonstrate that they have the willingness to because I don't think there's going to be a whole lot there for USC. Alex Zagri will attempt the field goal. It'll be a 38-yarder. He's 12 of 14 this season, has hit his last six. McNally, the holder. Make it seven in a row for the senior out of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Alex Fletcher, the starting center and the captain of the team out of Old Brookfield, New York. And let's meet Alex Fletcher. Alex Fletcher, center, Stanford. I definitely probably try to go into uh, the finance world. Being in San Francisco and uh, Palatary, just some of the uh, Thai food has been real good. I like how he tried. Do you like how he had a tie food? Did you see how he tried to look mean there at the yeah. end? That baby face can't look mean. There's not a chance. He's doing a great job in this oh, yeah. game, and he is that. He's the vocal leader, and he 
challenged his team early in the week that says this is going to be a game that's won in the trenches, mm -hmm. and right now, Stanford is winning that game in the trenches. Well, let's put it this way. Stanford's first drive, seven plays, 80 yards. That one, 11 plays, 46 yards. So right there, you've taken almost nine minutes off the clock, all with Stanford. But you yeah. can see USC on the sideline. We saw them all kind of getting together and doing the hand pump. Kind of reminiscent of last year, and we felt during that game that when they were doing that on the sideline, it was kind of like, we got to find a way to get these guys pumped up. They're trying to get motivated. You know, it reminds me of the horse race when the jockey goes to the whip. You hope there's something there. And right now, USC hopes that there's more there than what they're getting currently. Well, we're still in the first quarter. A minute, 20 seconds left in quarter number one. It's going to be C.J. Gable from the five-yard line. And he is tripped up as he crosses the 15. They'll mark him down at about the 16-yard line. Outstanding kickoff coverage from Howe. Let's take a look at our Craftsman Tools for Success. We've already seen this playing out. USC has to handle the blitz from Stanford's D. Haven't been successful thus far. And USC just can't self-destruct. Turn the ball over and penalty Stanford. They have to have their defense create scoring opportunities and better yet, score themselves. And then Stanford has to play with confidence. Thus far, Ron, a lot of confidence from Stanford. Well, Joe McKnight now in the ball game, and he goes in motion to the left. Sanchez looking. Pass knocked out. Oh, my. Looked like it could have been intercepted. Amajoy is the one that's going to have an opportunity. And we talk about make a play when there's a, there, a play there to be made. This is a great example. You won't see that in the stats come tomorrow morning. Right. But rest assured, that may influence the outcome of this football game. Brett Ellison right off his hands, the redshirt freshman. Second down and 10. McKnight again joins Sanchez. This time Sanchez from the shotgun. little sidestep up over the 20 to the 25 yard line that was a nice move by Damian Williams the sophomore transfer he actually played a year at Arkansas he is a guy that's been a pleasant surprise to the coaching staff but what a move he had there to make something out of nothing yeah defensive coordinator Ron Lynn said the one thing the first thing out of his mouth when I said the keys to win this game on your side of the ball is tackle well and that's what Stanford has to do you didn't see it on that play but they can't afford to give USC Yards after contact or yards after the kick. 35 seconds left in the opening quarter. USC looking for their first first down of the ball game. Stephon Johnson now in the backfield. They fake to him. Sanchez tripped up, dropped at the 19-yard line. Brian Bulky, the junior out of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. That is the second sack of the ball game for the Stanford defense. USC was in that third and short situation, meaning the offense dictates the play calling, play action, trying to throw to Havili in the flat and very well covered by Stanford. And that's going to be the end of quarter number one, but what a quarter for the Stanford offense and their defense. They hold USC without a first down. They'll head to quarter number two with a 10-3 advantage. Mark Sanchez trying to give his team words of encouragement, maybe trying to get him pumped up a little bit because in that opening quarter, his offense, zero first downs, six total yards. Yeah, words of encouragement are an all-out tongue lashing, whichever yeah. it takes right now for USC to get off the snide a little bit. Right, Nick from his five-yard line, good rush. Baldwin drifts over to the hash mark at the 36. Cuts back, looking for something, and he is going to be surrounded 43 yards on the kick, very little on the return, along with Kelly Stoffer, Amaran Thulin. Kelly, I think right now you look at uh, USC, they're not doing anything offensively, but I think you have to give some credit, I think, to the Stanford defense. Well, there's no question about it, and Stanford's defense is good. That's not a surprise. The thing that you keep your eye on, though, is Jim Harbaugh has this group convinced that they can play with USC. That's a leg up on most people that have to play this football team. That's if you're right. not intimidated, you have a chance. You know, David Shaw, the offensive coordinator, said at the end of last year that 
one of the reasons they were able to win a couple more after that USC game is because it did give them confidence that they thought we can go in and beat somebody and we're not going to panic. So Stanford takes over first and ten. Pritchard looking, throwing into the flat complete and the boom is lowered but not before up to the 42 yard line. Kevin Thomas on the hit by the way but watch this hit. Is that nickel back that comes into the game to throw out to the flat. Bam right there. And that's what USC brings to the table. Their secondary is so aggressive and they're such heavy hitters. They make you pay the price if you throw that ball downfield at all. And Delano Howell felt that one as Waylon now goes wide to the left. Only a pickup of two on that play. Gerhardt. Not much doing. May have picked up a yard on the play. Lewis, you're standing by that USC sideline. What's it like down there right now? Well, you know what, Ron? They're, they're very calm over here. Seem to be methodically working through everything. Mark Sanchez has been talking to his wide receivers, kind of trying to figure out what they're not doing at the moment. But think back to our conversation this week with Pete Carroll, and he said sometimes in game, you know, there could be a shift in momentum, which calls for you to focus, refocus, redirect, lock in. And I think that that's what they're trying to do over here. I don't sense any panic. As Sanchez walks yeah. the sideline, they're just trying to figure out how to get this offense going. Well, there shouldn't be. we are only in the second quarter right now. They fake to Gerhardt. USC does not buy it. Great job by the defensive line and the linebackers, led by Brian Cushing. The senior out of Park Ridge, New Jersey, Bergen Catholic High School. They call him the Bulldog of Bergen. Cushing is that guy who brings a lot of emotion. He's athletic. Speed guy, and when USC has to get more pressure than just the down four, Cushing's the guy generally that does it. And Stanford wants to kick it away. It'll be Stephon Johnson signals for the fair catch at the 25 yard line. And that's where USC will take over in the second quarter. 44 yards on the kick. They trail Stanford. To the Today's game is one of the most beautiful campuses in wow. all of college football. And the coach is trailing the Cardinal 10 to 3. Lola Kelly Stopper, Lewis Johnson, I'm Rob Dooley, welcoming you back to Stanford Stadium. A crowd of over 50,000. It's a sellout, the first sellout since it was remodeled and reopened in 2006. And let me tell you, we've been to a lot of stadiums in the last three decades, and this is one of the most it's beautiful stadiums since they've redone it. Beautiful. And looking out from our vantage point around this stadium over the top is. You have to keep your mind focused on this football game. Yeah. Now Stephon Johnson will go into the backfield. Ellison in motion. Here's Johnson. The right side. Picks up a couple up to the 25-yard line. All right, thanks, Ted. And you will be keeping us posted on all the scores and highlights from College Football Central and versus and including at halftime. 12-20 left to play in quarter number two. USC with the ball trying to get something going offensively. Straight ahead running to C.J. Gable. He's got the first down. The first first down of the ball game for the Trojans. Pac-10 standing. You can see USC 6-1. Oregon State 6-1. Oregon, Arizona will be at Arizona next week. Oregon State winning today, beating Cal at home. Yeah, they go into the desert in Tucson to play Mike Stoops as Wildcats next week. That obviously is a big game. USC is actually looking up at them right now, Ron. I know, and that's why the crowd in the hotel cheering when Cal scored first this afternoon. But Snyder teams up with Gopa for the tackle. USC fans cheering for Cal. You don't see that very often. No, no. But right now, it looks to me like Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator for USC, is saying, you know what, guys? Up front, you got to get it done. We'll create the tempo by running the football right here, and then you can have a mindset to pass block when we do that as well. But get it done up front. That's second down and six. The fake to McKnight. Sanchez rolling, looking, has a man caught. Down to the 45-yard line, an outstanding catch by Damian Williams. That'll be his second catch of the evening, the sophomore from Springdale, Arkansas. The play-action pass once again from Sanchez. They ran the ball a little bit. Guess what's coming, Ron, if you run the ball effectively? Uh -huh. Play-action pass. Williams is that slot receiver, goes across the formation. And wiser is that red shirt 
safety that read it well, but go make a play on the football. Pick up a 15 on the play, another first down for the Trojans. The quick pass into the flat to Williams again. Slips one, still on his feet inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Boy, you tell you, look at this Damian Williams. He has got some skills. Yeah, transferred in from Arkansas, and he's probably the most complete receiver right now on this team. The most consistent, you can see right there. He has a little shimmy. He can get yards after the catch. That's what USC has to do. Extend your running game by just throwing it quick to receivers and letting them run with the football. Mm -hmm. Be alert right now with Stanford dialing up some pressure because USC's in the rhythm just a little bit on offense. Finally, second down and three. Hazleton wide to the right, and he goes in motion. The pitch back to McKnight. Looks for a block, gets it. Closing quickly is Stanford, and McKnight stays on his feet. Gets down to the 30-yard line before Clinton Snyder and Will Powers come to make the stop, but not before another first down for the Trojans. They're third already here in quarter number two. You mentioned Clinton Snyder. He's that middle linebacker that came on the blitz that time, and USC had a perfect play. The pitch quick to the outside with McKnight. He's your speed guy. You want to get him to the edge. I was just going to ask, where's McKnight today? I know. They need to get some playmaking on offense. He's their guy. Now C.J. Gable checks back in. Once again, Stanford without Pat Maynard, their best linebacker. He is injured. Gable stacked up at the line of scrimmage. No gain. No gain on that last play. Second and ten for USC. Sanchez plants his feet, throws, caught inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Patrick Turner on the reception, his first of the ball game. The game within the game going on right here. USC doing a nice job of anticipating pressure from Stanford, so you change the launch point of your quarterback. Sanchez gets outside and throws it to Patrick Turner right there, but a very good understanding of Football 101, when you're driving, especially when you get close into the red zone, expect pressure from the defense. Pick up a 14 out of the play. You see what Sanchez has done so far this afternoon. Another first down. Johnson inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. And I think Lewis hit it on the head. There was no panic on the sideline, despite the fact that Stanford was playing well defensively. Pete Carroll, he, he exudes that. He understands yeah. that. He, and he always says, and he was telling us uh, the other day, he said, listen, I just try to redirect my guys. When I see things are going one way, we need to get them back to the fundamentals. We don't panic. Yeah, this isn't Coach Carroll's first rodeo. Rest assured of that. There's no panic on that side. You stick to what you believe in, and you continue to chop away, play the game, and see what happens. Three for the first down. Johnson spins, has the first down, loses the football, but got it back. Inside the five yard line. Right now, the point in time in this game, Stanford has simply done nothing but get off to a good start. Right. They're going to be pressured all evening long. You can see Stephon Johnson with the run right here. USC's been doing a better job of being aggressive and physical up front. That ball is out, I believe. I would challenge that if anyone yeah. saw that replay. Well, you think the coaches would be up in wow. the coaches' box and say, Jim, Harbaugh, you got to challenge that I play. I think that ball was out. First down and goal from the four. The official was not buzzed. Here's Gable. Stood up by Clinton Snyder. He has three tackles already. The junior out of San Diego, California, subbing again for Pat Maynard. Who, who recovered that football in the last uh, play? Did Stanford get to it? Yeah, I, I wasn't don't, sure. Actually, I'm not sure lost. who actually ended up with it. But that could be our answer yeah. why Jim Harbaugh did not challenge that. Yeah. That was definitely worth the red flag right there. They actually lost a yard on that play, second down yeah. and five. And they're telling us USC didn't recover, so that obviously is a good decision. Take to Gable, the pass over the middle, touchdown USC, Damian Williams. Williams' fourth catch of the evening, his 38th of the year. And that is his sixth touchdown reception. Williams certainly is becoming that go-to guy for Mark Sanchez. 
Good execution of that play. Play action pass, fight the underneath coverage up, and then Williams just has to beat his guy essentially one-on-one. -on -one. An impressive 11 play drive took just over six minutes for USC. And we are tied at 10. Stanford knows how to win football games. Sanchez is getting better at this in the red zone. Close it out. Play action pass. Damon Williams over the top. Nice throw. Nice catch. On the sideline of USC, they were excited. Mark Sanchez telling his teammates, we found our groove. Let's keep it going right now. And he found his groove. Four of four passing on that touchdown drive. Five first downs for the Trojans after zero in that opening 15 minutes. And I think Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator for USC, found his groove a little bit in play calling. A much better mix. Not run heavy, not pass heavy, but a good mix in keeping Stanford off balance. Beeler set to kick it away again. We are tied at 10, 6.47 left to play in the opening half. Another driving kick. Five yards deep into the end zone, and Stanford's going to bring it out. Owusu goes to the outside, and he is knocked out of bounds by the kicker, David Beeler, who's a former linebacker in safety. He does know how to, how to tackle. After that touchdown, here's Sanchez talking to his team on the side. Tell you what, he's, he's got a little fire in his belly right now. He really does. And I think that's one of the keys to this team going forward is Sanchez brings a different leadership style than John David Booty did from a year ago. He's more vocal, he's more energetic, and mm -hmm. it's times like this where your quarterback needs to step up and do just what he did. Let's see if the USC defense is now fired up and can Stanford answer. Gerhardt stacked up at the line, maybe picks up one on the play. Last win versus a ranked team at home for the Stanford Cardinal way back in 2001. They beat UCLA 38-28. Kobe Gerhardt, just a junior. Last year, wasn't able to play a whole lot. Got injured, didn't play in this game, as Lewis Johnson mentioned. Also a member of the baseball team. Hit 240 this past season. He just doesn't look like he has that burst right now. I agree. I'm wondering if that upper hammy is bothering him a bit. On second and eight, Pritchard's going to put it up. Penalty flag is thrown as he goes to his left. Run out of bounds into the SC bench area, but we do have a penalty flag right at the line of scrimmage. Alex Fletcher was yelling at one of the officials. Fletcher is emotional as if it's going to be USC on this, but yeah. they threw it in the area of holding, but it might be... Yeah, personal foul maybe on USC. One of those eight penalties per game. Personal foul, hands to the face on the defense, number 75. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, they've had 10 penalties five of the last six games, and that's been a problem. A lot of personal foul penalties. Yep. Last week they had two interceptions overturned because of penalties. And Pete Carroll says, I've got to walk that fine line be between telling these guys don't be so aggressive and continue to be aggressive. And you can see where they are as far as the rest of the country. Yeah, you can't throw away 80 yards a game and expect it not to come oh. back and bite you on the hind side one of these times. And in a close game, that's when those things jump up and get you. And Pete Carroll even admitted it. He goes, hasn't gotten this yet. Here's Gerhardt looking for some type of burst as he gets over the 45 down to about the 41 yard line. Pinkard has four stops already this evening. Mama Luga that time was in position to make a play, but watch at the very end. You need to take one more step and run right through the ball carrier. Ray was just a little bit late mm -hmm. finishing that play, and Gerhardt, we've already talked about, is the run finisher. There's a guy that was able to play just a little bit of defense, Ronnie Lott, and you talked to a guy like Taylor Mays. He said, listen, we've had guys like Troy Palomalu and Ronnie Lott. I patterned my game after those two. Not bad. On second and two, Gerhardt gets his block, got the first down, still on his feet. He could go, needs one block. Gets it inside the five, down to the one-yard line, 40 yards on the run by Toby Gerhardt.
We just got that saying that Toby Gerhardt is a self-described run finisher. Well, this is evidence that he knows what he's talking about. Look at the yards after contact. 231 pounds, he said to us yesterday. You don't go down in first contact. Continue to run, make a play, and finish the run. Well, did Stanford need this drive, Ron? Well, I'll tell you what, second 40-yard gain for Stanford. Pritchard had one of them in the first quarter. That was a scramble. First and goal from the one. Kimball puts his head down. Does he get in? Touchdown, Stanford. The man of the hour, Toby Gerhardt, running the football this evening. 13 rushes, 81 yards already. Remember where Toby Gerhardt was last year when this game was played out? He was at a barbecue for a baseball team, and then Kimball comes in and finishes off the lunge right at the very end, and I think this is being looked at upstairs. Yeah, it is. It's going to be challenged. But it seemed to me that that looked good. There was the stretch at the end, extend the football, over the goal line before any part of your body hits. I think this is going to count. Our referee, Dre, Jay Strickers, is going to be talking to the guys up in the booth upstairs. Look at it again. Gerhardt got the Cardinal down here. Oh, yeah, and yeah. The ball hit over and puts his knee down. Yeah, where the ball is when the knee goes down. and. I'd say that's a massive humanity. Yeah, there. I think that's a touchdown. I think it's good as called. Go for the touchdown. Ron, we were just talking about the fact that the momentum that Pete Carroll talks about in games was with USC. Right. Stanford comes about and out and gets it back in droves on that drive. An all important extra point for the seven point lead, 429 to play in the half. It is good. Ron, how good does this have to feel to Toby Gerhardt to not only play in this game against USC, but have plays like this? He bounces off multiple defenders, continues to run, finishes the play, and then the plunge by Kimball to finish it out. Exciting. Stanford's getting it done. College football on versus. Toby Gerhardt with his rushing yardage tonight has gone over 1,000 yards for this season. The first Stanford Cardinal to do that since 1991. Tommy Bardell. Touchdown, Tommy Bardell. TD, Tommy Bardell. But the most important number, I think, that Toby and the rest of the Cardinal will look at, the score 17 to 10. They have rushed for 151 yards in this opening half. Oregon State had the high against USC this year at 176. Here's C.J. Gable for USC on the kick. Sidestepping, and he's got room. Say goodbye to C.J. Gable. He found the blocks early and turned on the Jets. There's no substitute for speed and athleticism in the game of football. You can't take a breath against USC because of guys like C.J. Gable. You make a couple guys miss whether you're returning a punt or a kickoff, and then it's just speed to the house. Wow, what a answer. We're talking about timeouts and how much time for that. They didn't need much. 93 yards on the return by C.J. Gable, his first. And the extra point is good, 4.15 to go in the half, and we are tied at 17. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ted. Rolling well, in the studio, they're, yeah. they're line of scrimmage guys, but they have to like the big plays in this game as well, but both offensive lines are playing pretty, pretty well right now in this football game. But it was Toby Gerhardt giving the Stanford Cardinal the big lead at 17 to 10, if you call seven big, and then, of course, USC answering. But we still have plenty of time in this first half. I, I want to see how Stanford responds to USC's incessant pressure. Yep. It doesn't stop, and it's not going to stop until this game's over with. Will it become a battle of attrition then? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's the thing is the lack of depth on Stanford's team, will that start to show up? And the tremendous depth that USC has on their side of the football. 
expectations are high inside of Stanford Stadium. There's no question. Beeler set to kick it away again. No breeze at all inside this stadium. A driving kick. Stanford brought it out the last time. They're bringing it out again. Owusu had a big return the last one. Not this time. At the 15-yard line, he is tripped up by Jordan Campbell. You can see Brian Cushing getting pumped up just before that kickoff. He's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I think it worked, and I think that was a bad decision to try to return that kick that time. Yeah. USC leads the conference in kick coverage because they have so many athletes. You talk about depth at wide receiver, running back, linebacker, and in the secondary, that's where those guys show up is on your special teams. Bad decision bringing that out of the end zone. Now, if you're Stanford, you know you've got 4 11 left in the half. You're tied at 17. You cannot afford to make any kind of mistake here. Kimball, right side, stood up at the 15 yard line and pushed back. That will be enjoyable next Saturday night. Second down and nine. Richard fakes to Gerhardt plenty of time. He's already had a 40 yard scramble. This one will go for about eight, possibly nine. Ron, some of the best decisions you make as a quarterback are with your feet. Mm -hmm. That time USC had everyone covered. Sometimes the defense wins. A good decision means run out of the pocket if you have the opportunity and get what you can get. Well, he got eight on the play. Third down and one as Alex Lucas checks back into the lineup at quarterback. He's been in one series in the first quarter. He'll go from the eye formation. Marisa. And Gerhardt. First down, Stanford. Ayaba on the stop. He's got four tackles already. Stay tuned for the Nissan Heisman Watch. That'll be coming up at halftime. We saw once again on that play, the third and short. Gerhardt absolutely is a finisher of runs. I mean, he had contact basically at the line of scrimmage, but willed his way to move the chains. Interesting that Lucas came in for just one play. It's almost like Jim Harbaugh wanted to talk to to beat a Pritchard during that time. Penalty flag is thrown. But it's interesting that he just comes in for one play and it was a simple Offside handoff. On the defense, number six. five yards quickly. Okay, Mr. Quarterback, I'll pick your brain. 223 left to play in the half. It's tied at 17. You got the ball in your opponent's territory. Do you get gutty here, or if you're Jim Harbaugh, do you play it safe and just try to get in that uh, locker room at halftime tied at 17? Yeah, I don't think you really have to go out of your element here. Run your offense. You have three timeouts left and plenty of time on the clock. I think you can get in scoring range by just running what you've been running all evening. Richard has time. Little slip screen to Kimball. Gets up to the 40 yard line. Another first down for USC as we go inside of two minutes to play in the half. I think the only thing you have to do differently than your normal offensive approach is get to the line of scrimmage quicker. The right. play calling should remain the same. But don't make a mistake. If you're Tavita Pritchard, nothing there. Throw that ball out of bounds. Well, you mentioned getting to the line quickly. That's exactly what the offensive line just did. Richard straight drop four man rush getting pressure from behind throws it as he takes a wallop by Brian Cushing Cushing lowered the boom on him but somehow Pritchard got rid of the football girls and boys you don't want to play the position of quarterback watch number 10 Brian Cushing run here oh, oh my check the dentures that's a slobber knocker. Yeah, it? it's watching highlights like that that make you rethink of what position you want to play if you want to play this game at all. But Brian Cushing has a nice feel for the game. Very athletic, but very fast. Yep. But look what I found. Tavita Pritchard just ran in my living room door. <laughs> Second down and 10. I think Jim Harbaugh wants to call a timeout. Timeout. Stanford University timeout number well, Stanford's one. had a number of close games seconds. this year and Jim Harbaugh telling us we've got to learn how to close out because they haven't been able to close out a couple of them back in August they trailed Oregon State by eight and Daryl catching fumbles at the goal line Stanford wins it 36 28 
Toby Gerhardt gets the touchdown. They beat Arizona 24-23 October 18th. Kevin Kraft of UCLA finds Corey Hart. UCLA wins 23-20. And then Oregon's LeGarrette Blunt's three-yard touchdown run with six seconds left last week gave the Ducks a 35-28 win. Well, what Jim Harbaugh told us is that his his plan for reestablishing this program in winning ways is you become be competitive to begin with. Mm -hmm. They were 11 in, or 1 in 11 in 06. Let's not forget that. And step number two is win football games. And we just saw there, they were about 50-50 in those time, in those games where it could go either way. And then third, be consistent. And fourth, they want to win championships here, just not be competitive. Right now, they've got 141 to go in the half. Second down and 10. Nothing doing for Toby Gerhardt. Maybe gets a half a yard on the play. The clock continues to run. I think right now Jim Harbaugh is actually telling Davida Pritchard to huddle up off the off the football. Take your time a little bit. I think Ron, he's thinking what you're thinking is as this clock winds down, you have two timeouts left. You right. run a play. If it works and you gain some yards, then use it. But if not, let's not get into trouble here. Tied at halftime against USC is not a bad thing. This will be a third down play as Whalen goes in motion. Pritchard looks to put it up. He is going to be dropped back at the 33 yard line. Feely Moala, the senior from Buena Park, California, with a sack. And a timeout is going to be called. And now it's USC's turn to try to get enough clock for my. Mark Sanchez to work with, but that time Moala absolutely ran past Andrew Phillips, number 71, the right guard, beat him just in a one on one matchup. Now, if you're Stanford right here, you need to be buttoned up not yeah. only in punt protection, but punt coverage as well. David Green getting ready to kick it away to Stefan Johnson. Very little rush, a nice high spiraling kick. Johnson backs up to the 12. Good coverage by the Cardinal down to the 10 yard line. 53 yards on the kick and they lost three on the return. That's what you call buttoned up. That's exactly right and that's a, the third phase of the game that oftentimes people forget about. But in a close game where you're the underdog you have you want to stick around long enough to have a chance to win just like they did last year. You have to play well in special teams. They are number one in the Pac-10 as far as punt coverage, and they showed it there. 44 seconds left to play in the half. In case you're just joining us, Stanford struck first on their opening drive. Key plays, Howell, a 27-yard reception. Pritchard, a 40-yard scramble. USC has answered the call twice. McKnight spinning away. Penalty flag is thrown. Clock is at 38, but we will stop it. It's going to be a hold against USC. That'll be their third penalty of the evening. The question is whether Jim Harbaugh might decline this and then use timeouts and try to force USC to punt it if yeah. USC is wanting just to run out the clock and go in at halftime. Don't you want to move them back, though? Or wouldn't you want to? If you move him back, you give him well, the he, extra I think, down. I think he wants to decline it. I think he's talking to the official about that. No, nope, he's pushing him back yeah. now. Because the other side of the coin is you push him back so close to that end zone that a bad exchange. We'll interpret for you as a holding call on Jeff Byers, number 53, half the distance to the goal line. Is that what he said? We're going with it. But really well played on both sides of the field, I think, in this first half. Stanford obviously is very happy with this. USC got a little momentum going. Stanford showed that they're up to the challenge and got it back. And now Pete Carroll, remember the second half adjustments. Pete Carroll is absolutely incredible in second half of football games. They are clobbering opponents as far as scoring in the second half. They've allowed only 13 points in the second half this season. But those numbers may be thrown out because they also have not allowed as much yeah, yardage right. in the first half as they have tonight. USC with 86 total yards, Stanford 210, 156 on the ground. First and 15, Gable. 
upended, but still able to get over the 10 yard line down to about the nine yard line. Osaisai is the one with the first hit, and that's going to be the end of the first half. A surprising first half if you're a USC fan, but a Stanford fan, you are excited. Let's go to Lewis Johnson with Jim Harbaugh. All right, thanks, Jim. Your team has 157 yards rushing. How important has that ground game been to you here in the first half? Well, it's been good. good. Our backs are running hard. We're doing a nice job up front. We're moving people. We're sustaining blocks. Uh, playing good football right now on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side. All right. Got to improve the special teams. Right. Now, on the, in the second half, how do you keep USC in, in check? Well, we're going to start with the kickoff coverage. That's going to be uh, that's going to be number one and fundamental. We're giving up two big kickoff returns that have led to 10 uh, USC points. All right. Thanks. Okay. Ron? All right, Lewis, our halftime score, Stanford 17, USC 17. After the break, stay tuned for the Craftsman Halftime Report right here on Pershing. last four opponents have all been under 200 yards total offense already tonight Stanford with 156 yards rushing 210 yards total offense we were tied at 17 Lowell Kelly stopper I'm Ron Thulin. you look at that and you say can Stanford keep it up but the bottom line is in that first half they were able to run the football and that's what you said at the beginning of the game they had to do to stay in this contest Yeah, the blueprint was a physical run game and does Toby Gerhardt not epitomize what we're talking about the the yards after contact the downhill runner he finishes runs which he himself told us that's his trademark and you can see it right there USC isn't tackling very well they're not taking very good angles in the secondary and Gerhardt is flat making them look silly at times but you see right there 27 points in the lost Oregon State 23 in six games 17 in the first half to the Stanford Cardinal team. And we are set for the second half kickoff, and USC will get the ball first. Ronald Johnson. And he's got a seam. And he's got one man to beat. Tiptoes down the sideline, and he is out of bounds. Inside the 50 at the 47 yard line. But again, as you hold, heard Jim Harbaugh tell our Lewis Johnson, we've got to talk, help special teams. Again, they get burned. Yeah, played well on offense, played well on defense, but kick returns a different story. It's been an adventure, and Johnson takes this one, and it's not real sophisticated. There wasn't a lot of penetration, and then it's just speed, but he steps out right there with his left foot. But man alive, the way the defense is playing, the offense is running the football, you have to tackle somebody on kick return. You know, you play this great 30 minutes and you get burned in the first play of the second half. Is that going to give UFC something to push on? Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis. Well, whatever Pete was worried about there a few moments ago, I'm sure that long run back helped him out a lot. You know, I asked him about only having 39 yards rushing with the Trojans in the first half, and he said, look, that's the thing they need to prove to themselves here in the second half, that they can actually run the ball. And then giving up 156 yards rushing on the other side, he's, Pete really attributes that a lot to poor tackling. So the challenge for the Trojans, run the ball here in the second half and tackle on defense. Well, Johnson, 125 yards on kickoff returns already this evening. Pickup of eight on that last play, and we've got movement. Ball start, 86 on the offense, five yards penalty, still second pass. Anthony McCoy, fourth penalty against USC. The first half numbers, they look like this. You start with the way Stanford was able to run that football 156 yards keeping in mind that USC only gives up about one or 78 a game and that's what the order of the day is you can see USC didn't do anything on third down but quite frankly they didn't have many opportunities. No. Minus 13 as far as number of plays compared to Stanford. A second down and seven McKnight only one touch in that first half and he has stood up at the line of scrimmage 
by Bo McNally. And we were talking about that at halftime. Here's a guy that is a game breaker. He's not an every down back. He wasn't in high school and he really isn't, but he had only one touch in that first 30 minutes. Well, the defensive coordinator for Stanford, when we're talking about the way USC uses their running backs, he called Joe McKnight the Fiari, Ferrari, and that's what we see, but we haven't seen him much. There's been talk of a turf toe, potentially even being slightly in the doghouse for missing a class, but we don't exactly know why we're not seeing more of McKnight. Well, it's third down and seven. And Sanchez will pitch to McKnight. Steps aside, one tackle, first down, penalty flag is thrown. Down to the 27-yard line is Joe McKnight. I think a wide receiver is going to get called for holding back mm. out here on the edge. You're absolutely right. On the offense, number one, 10 yard penalty, spot for the foul, skip third down. Patrick Turner is called for the infraction, and that will nullify McKnight's outstanding run. And once again, those penalties in a close game, they're costly. It may not mean anything when your defense is just smothering the opposition, but when the offense is moving the football, those penalties can come back and bite you. And that's what Pete Carroll was telling us on, on Wednesday. He said, you know, it, it hasn't gotten us yet, but. And that just nullified an outstanding run. Good field position. Now they're back at the 46 yard line, facing third down and 10. Two minutes gone by here in the third. This is typically where Stanford really likes to come after Mark Sanchez, but they don't want to create mismatches on the outside either. They're showing the blitz, and here they come. SC picks it up. Sanchez running, steps away from one tackler. Going down, that should be intentional grounding, but they're saying he's outside the tackle box. I think they're actually going to call him. Call him down. Yep, down. I think tackle box was probably questionable, but once again, Stanford third and long, they're going to come after Sanchez. They're not bashful about it. Ron Lynn told us that yesterday. Good job of keeping contained, and then Bo McDowell comes in and cleans it up, and they called Sanchez down before he threw that ball away. It's a high-risk, high-reward defense, and it's paying off so far tonight. Fair catch is called at about the 17-yard line. And we'll take a break. Mark Sanchez running for his life, his team tied at 17. 12-23 left to play in quarter number three, tied at 17. Tonight's game is brought to you in HD by Pioneer. Robert Lewis Johnson, Kelly Stopper, Rob Thule coming your way from Stanford, California. Stanford Stadium, a sellout crowd. 50,000 on hand for this contest. Richard little play action moves the pocket. Howell up over the 30 yard line loses his helmet but he's got a first down. Jim Harbaugh saying that should be grabbing the face man. Should be. Will Harris number 26 the defensive back for USC grabs it on the end. Remember how Stanford started the, this game. It's this play right here. Exactly the same motion. How oh, goes yeah. to the flat. A good outcome and you're right that should have been. That. Those aggressive penalties, yeah. and that should have been one of them right there. The guy's helmet came off, for goodness sake. That doesn't happen just by no. gravity. But it's a first and ten for the Cardinal at the 31-yard line. Gerhardt stood up, loses a couple on the play. Will Harris, I think, again, making up for the potential penalty the one before but he's the he's a safety he was up at the line of scrimmage and Stanford did not do a very good job of getting out of the play loss of three out of play and we saw it at halftime when they teams came back out of the field Gerhardt was being stretched almost the entire time it was probably about five minutes we have to wonder how that upper hamstring is doing considering sitting out at halftime second down and 14 now Comes the rush from behind. Pritchard has to run. And he does the wise thing and throws it up into the stands. Yeah, you don't get to keep it, though. <laughs> you have to give it back? I know. Golly, it's a good catch, though. This isn't baseball. It certainly isn't the arena league. And if, you, and if you notice, Jim, Jim Harbaugh is trying to sign the kid as a wide receiver. Let's right see now. if he looked it into his hand, though. Great decision by DeVita yeah, Pritchard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he catch it clean or off the rebound? Oh! The tip drill up in the stands. How good is that? Give the kid a Stanford jersey. <laughs> Dad was 
bailing out, and the kid stood right yeah. in there. I like that. Yeah, thanks for leaving me. Yeah, thanks for hanging me. We've got a stoppage of play here. Third down and 14. Officials having a conference. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh wants him to reset the play clock. He's down to about seven. Hurry up, hurry up. Let's listen in. Timer set to get to 11 minutes, 14 seconds. 11, 1, 4. Okay, so they're going to add about 17 seconds on the clock. Pete Carroll's squad still no show, no sign of panic at all, and they should. Third down and 14. They bring four. Richard steps up in the pocket, has a man deep in the flat, and he overthrows Doug Baldwin. Those are the plays that Stanford desperately needs to beat a yeah. Richard to make tonight. Wide open receiver Baldwin, inside receiver goes to the corner and was wide open. You just have to put that ball on him. That would have been a huge play on third and long. And David Green, the redshirt freshman from Mission Viejo, set to kick it away. Johnson back at the 30 yard line. Green having a good first half kicking it, including a 50 plus yarder, and this one another good one. Johnson calling a fair catch right at the 30. 41 yards on the kick. We're tied at 17. Just to the north of us here at Stanford, of course, San Francisco, and one of the great cities in our country, tied at 17, 11.02 left to play. Here in quarter number three. Does that run all the way to San Antonio? All the way, baby. <laughs> That's how I'm getting home. Get there. You know, I, you have to ask yourself at this point in the ball game, considering USC has only 95 yards total offense, are they too conservative right now? I, I really think they are. H have we seen one pass go past 15 yards? I know the biggest completion, but you see right there the return yards, 231 led to 10 points, but they got nothing off that big mm -hmm. opening second half kickoff return. Sanchez with a little play action, dumps it off into the flat. Big hit. Fidel Hazleton on the catch. Michael Thomas, the true freshman out of Nimitz High School in Houston on the stop. Michael Thomas is that true freshman corner. He plays at safety in the nickel package, but you better bring the wood. You're not in high school anymore. Right. Hazleton about made him kill some plastic off that helmet that time. Well, you know, you look at the first four games, Mark Sanchez, 13 touchdowns, two 300 yard games passing. Pass three, only five touchdowns, no 300 yard games passing. The pitch, Johnson. Short of the first down, you can hear the pads popping up here. Sean Weiser, the redshirt freshman on a thousand oaks, and Bo McNally on the stop. Ron, you pointed this out in the first half. Who is USC offensively? What is it that they want to accomplish? One moment, one series, they feel like they want to grind it out like some Big Ten team, and then the next time they th throw three times in a row, that's not the mix that works, especially with the Stanford blitzing scheme. On third down and two. Stanford, everybody but two on the line of scrimmage. Johnson breaks through the line, got the first down, up over the 45 to the 48-yard line. Well, McNally tripping him up. He's got five tackles. Avili's that fullback that leads up in there, and this is what USC seems to want to do today, especially in the second half, is just get physical on the line of scrimmage and really kind of set the tone and set the tempo. But I think you have to take, not only take your shots if you're USC, but you have to take them on mm -hmm. first downs just like this. Good block by Jeff Byers, by the way, as C.J. Gable checks in the tailback. A little dipsy do, a little end around. This is Damian Williams, has running room. Dragged down from behind, but not before he gets another first down. Down to the 40-yard line. Let's check with Ted at College Football Central on versus for an update. Well, round number one, Alabama trailing Mississippi State, but a long punt return sets up this John Parker Wilson sneak. It's the first offensive touchdown Bama scored against Mississippi State in four years, Ron. <laughs> 
Uh, that's going to be a showdown. Yeah, showdown though in the SEC. Florida versus Alabama SEC title game. That's already been decided. First and ten. Balls on the 39. USC on the move. Quick three-step drop. Sanchez tries a little looking pattern. Incomplete intended for Damian Williams. Not very well executed. Mark Sanchez did all that at the line of scrimmage. And that's where that, what Steve Sarkeesian called it, the NFL influence. The quarterback has a lot of responsibilities at the line. He didn't get into the right play, or at least didn't execute it very well. You know, here, here's Mark Sanchez that really took over this team at spring because there, it was not for sure that he was going to be the starting quarterback, although I think all of us understood that. But he took over a lot of things, including the leadership role of this team, and he learned this offense, as you mentioned, it's NFL influence. The fake to Gable. Dumps it off short to Patrick Turner. He's got a first down, skips inside the 27-yard line, down to the 24-yard line. He's got two receptions tonight. Turner is the inside receiver that's going to come all the way across the formation, and he's actually read number three in the progression right there, the big bodies receiver underneath all that coverage. A corner, guy in the flat, and then the receiver comes across as number three. A good job by Mark Sanchez going through his progression. Another first down on the 24-yard line, inside of eight and a half to play in the third. McKnight back in at tailback. Stanford shows the blitz, and here they come. Sanchez runs away with it. Across his body, he throws. Fumble, I think, gets the, no, it's still loose. Pass was complete to Havili. Stanford says they have it. The officials will have to break up the pile. People are just throwing bodies off the pile. You can lose body parts in piles like that. They're waiting for the official signal, and it is Stanford's football, the first turnover of the game. The flashback to last year and what happened, Stanford hung around, and in the second half, USC imploded with four interceptions, four turnovers, five total in that game. Sanchez once again, McKnight is going on the wheel route, outside, well covered, comes to his outlet, which is the fullback actually, Habili, which is a very good receiver out of that backfield, but you have to secure the football. Remember, USC started with a big kick return, zero points. They're driving here, turnover, zero points. Matt Masafilo, the redshirt freshman out of Hawaii, came up with a loose ball, and Stanford gets it. First and 10 from their own 15. Gerhardt maybe gets two on the play. Malaluga on the stop. He's got six tackles this evening. Sanchez again goes back to almost, you want to say, damage control on the sideline. Trying to get these guys pumped up. Now you, you have to, if you're a quarterback, you have to keep your guys in it. You have to keep them focused because a lot of bad things can happen in a football game. It's not a very clean game. You don't execute it well right. all the time, but you have to keep your head up for when that opportunity presents itself, you can seize the moment. Pritchard doing a nice job of just managing this game. Hasn't done anything outstanding outside of a 40-yard scamper, which was huge. But since then, just managing it on second and eight, Gerhardt. Cuts back inside, gets to the 20 yard line, maybe to the 21 yard line. Lewis got some stuff on Pete Carroll for us. Yeah, hey Ron, you, Kelly, just look up at the scoreboard, right? 7.09 to go, 17 all tie here in the third quarter. And what did Pete Carroll say to us this week? He says, when you give your opponent the ball, that free stuff, you're setting yourself up to lose. He said, that's how football works for him. You can't give your opponent the ball and expect to win football games. That is a costly turnover. We'll see how much it costs them with uh, Stanford now trying to drive the field. But you can't do that. Well, you saw that last graphic. How about his only double-figure loss was 11 points. That's it. Third down and four. USC brings a lot of bodies. Off the fingertips incomplete. Waylon had it, should have had it. You know, Waylon on Mawaluga has to end up better than that if you're Stanford. Yeah. They have the right matchup. They just didn't throw a very good ball if you're to beat a Pritchard. you got to put it on him. 
only 11 yards so far for Stanford in a couple of possessions here in the second half. So the USC defense doing their part. That was a huge missed opportunity. You Absolutely. have what you want. By design, you have to finish with one. Kicking game's been kind to Stanford. That doesn't, isn't kind to Stanford. Takes a USC bounce over the 45 to the 47 yard line. Trojans and the Cardinal tied at 17. That was last year. Jim Harbaugh talking to the crowd. They were shocked. Couple thousand. There's 50,000 of his closest friends here tonight. That was at midnight. What would it be tonight if he can duplicate that? Stanford since 2002, one in 20 versus ranked teams. The only win, of course, USC. And the Trojans take over close to the 50-yard line. 6:24 left to play in the third. Comes a little end around, looking to throw it. They have a man. They've got Williams. It's under throw. Tipped incomplete, almost intercepted. Sean Weiser had his hands on the football. Williams was the intended receiver, but it was under throw. Down and 10. The play action. Sanchez gets pressure from behind, intended for Williams. That pass is incomplete, and a penalty flag is going to be thrown. Not sure why. And the officials are going to talk it over. It's going to be against Stanford. It's going to be an interference call. And the Stanford coaching staff cannot believe it. I gotta be honest, Kelly, I did not see it. Yeah, the Stanford coaching staff pleading their case and the officials are meeting again. Let's look at this again. The pass again behind Williams. I don't know where that pass interference was. I don't think it was on anything that we just saw on the screen right yeah. there. It's a mystery. When you have a big huddle like this by the officials, they typically don't exactly know what happened either. Yeah. Well, everybody is waiting around for Drake, Jay Stricker's call. But you go back to that reverse pass by USC and typically right. that's an indication that we don't really know what's working right now. And so you have Rick to call Lee, something. The play was on the field for pass interference on the defense. However, the contact occurred prior to the pass. The receiver was in front of the defender. Therefore, by rule, there was no foul. Disregard the play. Down the, go. the key of any officiating crew is to get it right. I mean, uh, talking to officials over the last uh, four or five months, they all agree, we got to get it right. If we have to take a few seconds, we want to get it right. Pete Carroll doesn't think it was right. But it sets up a third down and 10 situation for the Trojans. One of five only tonight on third down. Ronald Johnson, Patrick Turner wide to the right. Williams in motion. Here comes the pressure. Sanchez steps up, throws, has a man going deep, passes, incomplete, knocked away at the last second. Again by Osai Sai, intended for Johnson. And Osai Sai plays this exactly right. You don't have to necessarily turn back and look for the ball, but what you have to do is when the receiver gives you the indication the ball's in the territory by reaching up for it, that's when Osai Sai's right hand comes in, played perfectly. And USC has to kick it away at a spiraling kick. Fair catch is called for at the 10-yard line. Another good job by that Stanford defense. 
and a frustrating time for that USC offense. You know, we talked about the Craftsman tools for success earlier in the ball game. Here are the updated numbers on that. We talked about uh, USC needing to handle the blitz. Stanford has three sacks, and it's don't self-destruct. It's not only the one turnover, but it's a lot of penalties if you're USC. And then Stanford has done a great job on third down that we talked about. They haven't created scoring opportunities and then play with confidence. You have to have a lot of confidence to rush the ball that well on this defense. Only 15 yards in the second half so far for Stanford. They have the football. They're going for Wayland. He jumps up in the air. That pass is incomplete. It's funny because after the change of possession, Kelly, I was going to ask you, do you have a tendency, if you're a coach in this situation, maybe to go a little turtle? In other words, you got to pull back a little bit. <laughs> you're talking about Stanford, right? I'm talking about Stanford. You know, you're tied at 17. You've got bad field position. Do you try to pull back a little bit, but Jim Harbaugh throws a little dice down yeah. and says, I'm going for it. And I think that's what you do. That was a very safe pass. It was one-on-one, -on -one, throw a fade outside. If your guy gets it, great. If he doesn't, the ball goes to the ground. But they, they play turtle offensively anyway. Pound <laughs> it up inside and see what happens. Gerhardt from the 10. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, the swarming USC defense. Led by Fili Moala out of Buena Park, California. Boy, this defense is really wow. tightened up in the second half. Yeah. And they're, I think with that quick read, which when you pitch the football, you immediately show the defense where the ball is going. There's no ball handling. And that speed of USC just envelops plays like that. Now, this is a dangerous part for Stanford, you would think. Great point. As Lucas comes back into the lineup, he is known for his running again. But he only has played like three or four plays so far this evening. Now he's coming in with his back to the wall. I would think quarterback draw here or roll him and throw it out of bounds if nobody's there. Quarterback draw is correct. And he just slips and falls, picks up two on the play. That'll bring up another fourth down. And that USC defense again flexing their muscles. Well, Ron, notice where the field position is going. Progressively, Stanford is backing up more and more. You can see USC, their own 45 start, starting point in the second half. Stanford, their own 15, and it's getting worse as we speak. And again, they'll have to kick it away. This one on a line drive, and again, it takes a bad bounce, and Stanford just swats at it. USC better get out of the way, and they do. Let's check in with Ted Robinson back at College Football Central on Versus 4. Another update, Ted. Well, Ron, it is Utah trying to go 11-0 and well on their way. Brian Johnson has thrown four touchdown passes. That one to Freddie Brown, and Utah heading for a showdown with BYU next week. Ron? And, of course, Utah number seven in the BCS standings. USC trying to hope their BCS standings improve. Currently, they're number six. They have to have a couple of things happen if they have any chance at the title game. But now they take over again. Good field position. McKnight straight up the middle. He has time, but he gets tripped up at the last second. Bo McNally got the handout. 24 yards, or Weiser got the hand out. 24 yards on the carry. Thought he was gone, Kelly. Well, here's your big play guy taking on a bigger role in the second half, and you don't have to throw it downfield if you have McKnight in the game, but look at the fingertips right at the very end by Weiser making a touchdown saving tackle. McKnight has to go to the sideline. Now, he has been suffering from turf toe, missed a couple of games, got to play last week. First and 10 from the 26 yard line. Johnson. Down to the 20 yard line. Pick up of six. Now, Ron, we talked about this at halftime. If USC does not implode offensively, can Stanford hold up? And I, I don't know that we know that answer right now, but USC's been able to drive the ball, but they also give the ball back. They've come up empty also here in the second half. But they've had great field position, second and four. Johnson down 
to the 15. He's got the first down. 3.42 to play in the third quarter. Again, we've talked about the consistency of this USC offense. Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, said sometimes we're good, other times we're so-so. And I think that's played out again this evening. Yeah, you're exactly right. And USC is going to have to hold under, hold up under pressure right now because Stanford isn't bashful about going zero blitz, meaning man to man across the board and bringing as many as we have to to get after Sanchez. Damian Williams moves over to the left side, and again, Stanford showing blitz. The fake to Johnson. Sanchez buying some time, he's got some green in front of him. Takes a shot as he goes inside the 10, down to about the 8 yard line. Powers and Lorig on this stuff. Stanford, or USC, does a lot down in the red zone. Turner right here is the back side of the play. Remember where your quarterback is going. That's a hard receiver to, to get back to. There was a receiver going to the corner, one in the flat. And I think Sanchez in the end made a great decision by running with that football. Picked up eight, second and two. Needs to get to the five for the first down. Johnson has paid her touchdown, Stephon Johnson. The short field position has paid off for USC. And really, Ron, you got the sense it was only a matter of time before Stanford's defense began to suffer when their offense wasn't doing anything. But we have a chance to take a look at that. Kavili, the fullback, absolutely annihilated the Stanford defender as Johnson took that one into the end zone. First lead of the ball game for the Trojans. Beeler for the extra point. And it's a seven-point advantage now for USC, courtesy of Stephon Johnson's sixth rushing touchdown. Well, 31 Havili is the point of attack, but right there, that's a headhunter. That's what a fullback's supposed to do. You run it to the point of attack, and you hit the first thing solidly that you see. And right there on the receiving end is Sean Weiser, the red shirt. Free safety coming up to take a pick, and it didn't work out so well. Avila, the roommate of Mark Sanchez. Well, Ron, we got the sense it was only a matter of time before USC started get, getting something going offensively, particularly when their field position was getting better and Stanford off, offense wasn't getting anything done. Stanford's defense right now is worn down. They're depleted because of injuries, but right now they're just flat worn out. We were talking about attrition for that Stanford defense. Now let's see if they can answer the challenge as they are trailing for the first time in this ball game. Beeler's kicked five yards deep this time. Owusu decides not to take it out. Let's take a look at what teams are on top of the Lowe's building towards the BCS. You can see the way it stacks up right now. Texas Tech off this week. They play Oklahoma next week in Norman. Texas has already beaten Kansas. Florida a winner today. The USC down at number six. Now USC's chances, a couple of things have to happen. And now this is just a very basic scenario, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Big 12 North has to be the Big 12 South, assuming that that's Missouri taking on either Texas, Texas Tech or Oklahoma. Florida's got to beat Alabama in the title game. And Somehow Oregon State's got to lose. They've got to keep their fingers crossed on that. Stanford takes over. First and 10, their own 20-yard line. Pritchard passes tipped incomplete. Kyle Moore got a hand on it. Lewis Johnson. Hey, uh, Ron, far side here behind the USC bench, you can see Joe McKnight. Uh, his trainer's right there flecking him on each side as he's trying to figure out what's up with that right toe. Earlier they had the right shoe off. They were looking at the toe, put it back on. And if you just read the body language, you can tell that big number four has got a problem. But <laughs> and bad for him, but when you think about the depth that they have at running back, let's put another one in there. Yeah. Well, McKnight is that big play guy, though, and he's like a racehorse. A toe with him means a whole lot more than it does to me. Yeah, that turf toe really bothers him. Now Pritchard. Getting away from the pressure, still running on his feet, dumps it off, passes complete, close to the 30-yard line to Toby Gerhardt, or Lucas. Lucas on the pass. Ron, this is where USC really starts to squeeze it like a vice defensively. Yeah, 
They continue to get the offense behind and down and distance and it is tough to make a living this way to consistently drive the football. That's exactly what you have to do though. Get your quarterback on the move and see if you can put a drive together right here. Your defense desperately needs it. They've got to sustain something. Richard now back in. Gerhardt with him. Gerhardt with the football. Still on his feet as he gets up to about the 34 yard line. Pick up a four. More and pushing on the stop. One forty five to play in this quarter. Gerhardt has been held in check here in the third quarter. Kelly how I think one what Pete Carroll talked about is USC is just simply tackling better much better angles and Stanford's offense hasn't really shown a willingness to throw the football down the field. Defensively you can kind of solidify things in the front seven if you don't believe the offense is willing to take shots. Anthony Kimball now checks in for Gerhardt inside of 115. Penalty flag is thrown right at the 30 yard line. Pressure was put on by Will Harris who's having a whale of a football game from that strong safety spot. And Will Harris actually may have caused that holding penalty on Anthony Kimball. I think you got it. Deep in that backfield, Harris was coming on the blitz, that extra defender, to not let Tavita Pritchard get comfortable and may have led to the holding. There were two penalties, both on the offense for holding. Right guard and also number five. Ten yard penalty, still second down. You have a choice on this one. Now Pritchard's gone to a, a youngster already in the stands for a catch, and that young man caught the football, but this guy. Lewis! He doesn't even move. Lewis! He doesn't move. Make a move for crying out loud. Jeez. You gotta make a play on the ball but when it's in you, the, in you the guys, air. You guys have a weird angle from where I was sitting. Yeah, I knew it now. wasn't coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they all say. And all the fans behind me are telling me that I should interview that kid uh, that caught the ball. You <laughs> say for the training staff. <laughs> Someone better catch it right here for Stanford. Second down and 17. Lucas with the football. He's got the first down over the 40 yard line. That's the running we talked about. This is the changeup. Brings more flexibility to the running game. The zone read. Good job pulling it out and taking it around the end. That's what Lucas brings to the table right now. A little bit more speed. He doesn't bring to the passing game what Tavita Pritchard does, but he brings that with his feet. Pickup of 18 on the run. First down and 10. Final 50 seconds here in quarter number three. Kimball goes right into the heart of the defense. Maybe picks up two on the play. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Ron, we talked about why has USC defended the run better in the second half. In the first half, Stanford ran 81% on first down. Mm -hmm. USC obviously knows that. They make adjustment. Pete Carroll is very good at that and has a great defensive staff. If you know the offense is going to run 81% of the time on first down, you sell out on that down a distance. Now we talked to uh, you know Jim Harbaugh about this yesterday. He says, well, you know, you're right. we got to get it to 40 to 60%. This will be the final play of the third. Lucas still with the football. He's in trouble. And he's going to go down. This is going to be a big loss. Back to the 31 yard line. Loss of 13 on the play. And that ends quarter number three. Only one score in the second half so far. That belonged to USC. It was on a running play. And as we head to the final 15, the Trojans lead it 24 17. Final 15 minutes of the ball game, and it's a 24-17 lead by USC, along with Lewis Johnson and Kelly Stoffer. I'm Rob Thulin. Glad you're with us. Stanford last year, of course, upset the Trojans, the number one team in the country. They're trying to upset the number six team in the country this evening. Stanford facing third down at 18 after that big loss by Alex Lucas. Looking, has some time, 
Short pass over the middle, well short of the first down, and even the original line of scrimmage, Toby Gerhardt on the reception. And again, Stanford's going to have to kick it away. And that's where you see where you, USC's defense is, they play the game intelligently well. And you can see right there, Mawaluga knew it was third and 18. There's no reason to drop deep. Make him throw the ball in front of you, break on the football, and make him punt it away. The last couple of bounces on punts have not gone Stanford's way, and this one won't go Stanford's way either. Last three kicks have helped Stanford or USC get good field position, only 31 yards on the kick. Let's check with Ted Robinson, College Football Central on versus for a Pac-10 update. Well, Ron, a crazy game in Eugene. Oregon was up 48 to 17, but Arizona has scored four straight touchdowns. Keola Antolin has run for four, and Arizona's within three with six minutes to play. Ron? All right, Ted, Arizona, of course, and Oregon State next week right here on Versus. First and 10 from the 30-yard line for the Trojans. Sanchez throws into the flat complete up to the 35-yard line to Patrick Turner as we take a look at the Pac-10 standings. You can see why this game is so important for USC, and they kept an eye on Oregon State earlier today. Oregon State has the their own destiny basically yep. in their hands. The head-to-head -head is the tiebreaker in that if they if they run the table, and Oregon State doesn't show any signs of slowing down at this point in time. Okay, Mike Riley is one of the best coaches in all of college football. Hands down. C.J. Gable got the first down over the 40 to the 43-yard line. I'm a joy on the stop. Ron, what's happening right now is the the war on the line of scrimmage is swinging into yeah. USC's favor in this matchup. O'Dowd and Byers and Parsons and Howell and Brown up front are getting it done right now. Stanford's defensive front seven is worn down just a little bit. We saw the average start position in the second half. USC has had outstanding field position. Sanchez, a little quick drop, pump fake. Has a man, Ronald Johnson, penalty flag is thrown. You know, Sai Sai Ron is going to be called for pass interference or holding depending on when the ball got in the air. Ronald Johnson made a double move, a hitch and go, and he absolutely was going to come clean. Osai Sai reached out and grabbed whatever he could. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding on the defense, number six. Ten yard penalty, creating the spot, automatic first down. We talked about USC needing to go downfield a little bit. The hitch and then the go. And this is a smart penalty yeah. in the end with Osai Sire. That was going to be a touchdown. If there's one guy, though, that can catch up to him. It is Osai Sire. He runs 100 meters for the track team here. In fact, uh, this spring they had track and spring football at the same time. And Jim Harbaugh says this kid's incredible. Along with his studies, he never missed anything on either sport. Ken Norton charging up his troops. The offense again on the move. Gable, left side, has some running room. Inside the 20-yard line, finally knocked out of bounds, and they'll mark it. Actually, they're going to put him down at the 24-yard line. Pick up a 24 on the play. Right now, we talked about USC is starting to get it done up front, and when you have game breakers at the running back position, you keep pounding in it before long, that little trickle is going to become a flood, and that's what's starting to happen with USC. I think Steve Sarkeesian's doing a better job with his play calling. You have to throw it downfield to loosen him up and then go pound away again. I think that was a great example. You can see the defensive line of Stanford not being able to get off the blocks. Maybe a little winded at this point. On the ground again with Gable. Inside the five-yard line, down to the four. And Gable, nice run, and at the end, Bo McNally, you got to keep your head up and see what you're trying to hit. That's a high hurdle. That looks like uh, Lewis Johnson right there. Lewis was an 800. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But it's first and goal now for the Trojans. 12:40 to play in the ball game. Once again, the Stanford defense run completely on their heels. Gable again, and you can hear the pads popping. May have got back to the line of scrimmage. 
Tom Kaiser went underneath the pile, the Richard freshman out of North Allegheny High School in Wexford, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. He made the stop. If you're Stanford, obviously, a turnover here would be very, very nice, but just keeping the Trojans out of the end zone would be a huge victory at this point in time. Sanchez will go over, over center. Gable behind him. Couple of tight ends. Gable, touchdown, USC. Ron, you talked about a couple of tight ends in the short yardage goal line situation and great blocking at the line of scrimmage. Anthony McCoy, the great edge, he sets it right there and Will Powers gets sealed off to the outside and Gable just steps up inside, made it look very easy on that entire drive, actually. Absolutely. Just run of the football. The extra point. With 11.46 left to play in the ball game, USC has opened up a 14-point advantage. It's been a tale of two halves if you're Stanford's offense, because in the first half they were able to run the football, second half not able to move the football at all, only 46 total yards in the second half, 18 rushing, and meanwhile, USC running the football at will, and that kind of tells the story. Yeah, it's just totally flipped, and I think USC obviously has made good adjustments which isn't unusual for Pete Carroll's USC defense, and they're getting it done on the line of scrimmage as well. And I think they, that offensive line for USC got challenged at halftime and said, you know you what, guys? In order to win this game, you need to get it done up front. Once again, USC only allowing 13 second-half points the entire season. Zero tonight, Beeler's kick. needs to start contending with a little bit of offense here. Gerhard bounces to the outside, tries to get the corner, gets it a little bit, got the first down. Taylor Mays running him out of bounds. That's the best offensive play so far in the second half of this game for I don't know if it was a good anticipation of the pressure for USC or just the right play call. Will Harris is on the line of scrimmage for USC on the other side. And Gerhardt is able to bounce it out on the side opposite the pressure. But that's right now what, if Stanford wants to run the football, they're going to have to run it into at least seven or eight guys every time, sometimes nine. And you have to look at the Stanford offense and say, do they have any vertical threats? Complete for Wusu. He's got another first down over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Pickup of 17 on the play. Well, Wusu is probably the best downfield threat. Wayland, number eight, is more of the possession guy. But this will work as long as you continue to do it. This is just the underneath route. Well, Wusu turns around at about 10 yards, shows Richard his numbers, and then turns around and gets yards after the catch, which is the important thing if you're not a threat downfield. Get it after you catch the ball. This time, Pritchard moving the pocket. Throws on the run, incomplete. Off the hands of Doug Baldwin, Will Harris was on the coverage. But you can see him trying to get away from that pressure of USC, but what that does is give him second down and long at 10. Right, and so the pressure has turned up even more on second and long, and even more so on third and long if it remains that way, and that's what USC's defense does to you. It kind of squeezes the life out, out of you little by little. In the first half, Stanford was Averaging five and a half yards on first down in the second half, only three and a half. That's the difference that we see in the second half. Gerhardt right into the middle of that defense and nothing doing. Mawaluga closing in on double figures and tackles. He has nine. Pete Carroll known for the defense. How about that, as we mentioned? Yeah. Only 13 in the second half. 157 to 13 and what you can write across the top of that graphic is halftime adjustments and Pete Carroll's staff is incredibly efficient at making adjustments. Best scoring USC defense in 56 years total defense best in 41 years. Third down and 10. Here comes the blitz. 
Richard dumps it off, pass is complete. Baldwin picks up maybe two on the play, possibly three. But the pressure came by Everson Griffin, the sophomore out of Avondale, Arizona. And what we pointed out at halftime was the poor tackling by USC's defense. And then Pete Carroll followed it up with a comment to Lewis about poor tackling by USC's defense in the first half. They've tackled very well here in the second half. And again, Stanford's going to be forced to kick it away. David Green hasn't had much luck in the second half. Boomed a couple in the first 30 minutes. This one's much better, the spiraling kick. Johnson back at the 10-yard line. Fair catch is called, and that's where USC will take over. 40 yards on the kick. Tied at 31-17, USC leading Stanford. All right, Ted, thanks so much. Of course, Arizona next week right here on Versus taking on Oregon State. And in two weeks, we'll have Texas Tech taking on the Baylor Bears. That'll be coming live from Lubbock, Texas, right here on Versus. USC takes over first and 10 from their own 10 yard line. Do they go for the kill now? I think they want this drive to be just exactly that. They've been successful on the ground here in the second half. Much better after a first half that saw them get only 90 total yards. I think if you're USC, in particular, Steve Sarkeesian calling the plays. It's, it's organized, you want to run the clock, but you also want to give Mark Sanchez an opportunity if you need to throw the football to go ahead and make a nice play to keep the chains moving. This needs to be the drive that just drains Stanford mm -hmm. for this evening. Sanchez, 10 of 16, only 86 yards throwing the football. On second and eight, this time the Stanford defense stepping up. This is a golden opportunity, though, if you're the Cardinal. We have a penalty flag down. Golden opportunity, though, for the Cardinal. If you can hold USC right now, you might get better field position than you've had the entire second half. I think this is going to be a personal foul on USC. It's going to back them up more. After the play, personal foul, late hit on the offense, number 40. Penalties enforced half the distance to the goal. The down counts. The down will be three. Rhett Ellison, the redshirt freshman. And that redshirt freshman may not get on the bus at the end of the game after that penalty. But this is where Mark Sanchez has to make good decisions. You're backed up as a quarterback. Your team has a two-possession lead, so you have to just make good decisions. But Steve Sarkeesian needs to have confidence in his quarterback right here. And a crowd of 50,000 getting loud again. Stanford 4-0 at home this season. Third down and 14 from the five-yard line. Straight ahead running. First down, USC, and then some. Inside the 50-yard line. Stephon Johnson covers 43 yards on the carry. Then again, if you're Steve Sarkeesian and you're getting a good fit up front, yeah, right. why not just run it right down Main Street, right into your living room right here? O'Dowd doing a nice job of sealing off. Actually peels back and gets a second guy. But you didn't see a Stanford defender in the picture. What means, that means, obviously, head coach Pete Carroll likes that. But Stanford's defensive front is absolutely worn out. Yeah, it looked like Sean Weiser, the safety, got beat on the blitz. And then Michael Thomas missed a tackle. Nice. And now wide open to the Havili. Inside the 20, inside the 10. Touchdown, USC, 50 yards. The two roommates hook it up. Sanchez to Havili. They love Stanley Havili, the sophomore out of Salt Lake City. They say he blocks well, he catches well, and he runs well. We saw two of the three there. Yeah, yeah we've seen him block well before that, but he's a great receiver, as fullbacks a lot of times are in that West Coast style offense out of the backfield. You talked about a dagger, Ron. This may be it right here. Stanley Havili out of the backfield play action. Don't forget to cover the fullback, especially if it's Stanley Havili.
Those of you just joining us, it was a tight first half, 17-17. USC took a 24-17 lead at the end of three. They've added two more, including that man, Stanley Havili, at a 50-yard catch and run. And that's why USC is up 38-17 with 7.35 to play. Three plays, 90 yards, a minute and 40 seconds. I think, uh, Kelly, you hit it on the head. We talked about it at halftime, the attrition factor of USC in this game. Beeler, that driving leg, he's going to be playing on Sundays. Let's go to College Football Central on versus for another update. Here's Ted Robinson. Well, Ron, Alabama's hanging on to number one, although their offense isn't contributing. This is an 80-yard punt return by Javier Arenas. Midway through the third, Alabama now is up 19-7 on Mississippi State. Ron? All right, thank you, Ted. Alabama just looking for that showdown with Florida coming up in the SEC championship game in a couple of weeks. Mark Sanchez tonight, that added to his numbers. A 50 yard touchdown pass. And now Stanford. Pritchard looking, going to have to run. Has a man, dumps it to Whalen. Caught! What a catch by Whalen. Just gets over the 40 yard line of the 44. What a catch and what a pass to Vita Pritchard, the right-handed quarterback moving to his left, and this is like an LEU pass in basketball. Drop it over the top and hope that it doesn't get picked off, and in the end, it works out well for Stanford. And that's a first and ten with 719 to play in the contest. Stanford still one game away from being bowl eligible, and it's going to come down to the game with Cal. Pritchard, that's a dangerous pass, incomplete. Cushing was also close to that. Feely Moala was the one that put the pressure on Pritchard again. Now Moala and guys up front are getting after the quarterback right now. Obviously Stanford in a throwing situation and you don't want to be in a throwing situation against this USC defense. They can no. bring it from every imaginable direction. 310 yards for Stanford, 354 for USC in this ballgame. Second most allowed by this USC defense. But the big numbers on the scoreboard. Gerhardt stays on his feet, gets to the line of scrimmage. We go inside of seven minutes. Will Harris, six tackles tonight. Mark Sanchez, 11 of 17, 136 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Ron, we talked about it, the attrition factor. He's catching up with Stanford as we see a Stanford offensive lineman. Actually, it's Alex Fletcher, the center, needing help. But you saw this Stanford team collectively, defense and offense, starting to get worn out. And that's something that didn't happen last year because about the time the Stanford team started to get worn down a little bit last year, USC put the ball on the ground a few times and mm -hmm. gave them hope. And they got to stick around a little longer than maybe they thought they would. Alex Fletcher is down. Burt McBride, the backup center, has already taken the practice snaps. Smart play by McBride to get over there and start snapping the ball back to Pritchard. Next Saturday versus across the country, coast to coast college football triple header. Harvard meets Yale in the first game. Game number two, the Mountain West Conference. TCU taking on Air Force. And then the primetime showdown, Arizona taking on Oregon State versus college football next Saturday at noon. First of two weeks, we'll see Oregon State because Oregon, Oregon State, the following week will also be right here on Virtues. Richard in big trouble. Throws it to Lewis Johnson, who is nowhere near it. Lewis isn't going to make a play on the ball in the air anyway. We've already no. seen that. No. He's at the hotel ordering dinner already. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah, I'm already at the hotel, guys. So this RF equipment works in unbelievably well. <laughs> no, I'm still here, still working. As you as you always do. You know, you look at Jim Harbaugh there in, in his second year, and this is a guy that, that is coaching the same way he played, I'd have to say. You're right. You know, just Cap being Captain, around him a couple of years. Captain comeback, and that's exactly what he's trying to infuse into this program. And he's actually been quite successful. They just have to learn how to finish, and you can finish better, obviously, if you have a little bit more depth. 
Well, this is fourth down. Pritchard going back, looking for the first down. Passes. Intercepted at the 36-yard line by Brian Cushing. The pass was intended for Whalen off his hands and Cushing. Johnny on the spot. And when you have to throw against this USC defense, usually it's not going to go well. They can generally get pressure with four. Protected very well that time. But Cushing is back there in that middle linebacker position, just playing the ball as it breaks in the air. USC is so talented, fast and athletic in that back seven, it's hard to find a window to throw it into. I tell you, look at that defense. And, you know, everybody talks about Pete Carroll and his enthusiasm and getting out there and doing this, that, and whatever with the team. People forget he is a great defensive mind. You've got to give him a lot of credit for this defense. McKnight. In trouble with that turf toe, not showing it here. McKnight still on his feet. Into Cardinal territory, down to the 43-yard line. You know, he says, I want to make sure, I don't want to be tackled by just one guy. That's why I keep going for the extra yards. I want four or five guys have to bring me down. Well, the thing he has to do when he fights for those extra yards, as we've seen a few times in games in the past this year, he doesn't secure the football all that's that right. well. And that's that ridgy Bush element that McKnight needs to bring to this USC offense. They miss it right now. He needs to consistently bring that to the table. Well, he's fumbled five times this year. Not on this play, able to pick up a couple as we close in on five and a half left in this ball game. USC still have a couple of opponents left on their schedule in two weeks. They play Notre Dame at home, then they travel to take out Rick Neuheisel's UCLA Bruins. And now McKnight being helped off the field. So yeah, that, just when he started to look good. Yeah, that toe just isn't right. And when you're a thoroughbred that's made to run, like McKnight is, you get a little tweak down there, mm -hmm. and it means much more than it does to a guy who just muds it up inside and goes downhill all the time. That's not McKnight's game. Second down and eight for the Trojans. The little pitch to Johnson. He trips his way through the 30-yard line down to the 27-yard line. You know, Lewis, when we look at that USC team, I mean, they're, they're three and four deep at some positions. That's almost NFL quality. No question. You know, right here, Ron, this is what we call a two deep. This is where you find the starter and the backup. But for USC, you could call it a three deep or maybe a four deep. And at running back, you could call it unbelievably deep. Take a look at what the USC running backs have done today. We'll take a look at it in just a second. There they are, Stephon Johnson and McKnight, Gable. Only three there, but, I mean, they have three and four and five guys here. But Sarkeesian says, Steve Sarkeesian says, their goal is just to put guys in position, mm -hmm. see who has the hot hand, turn them loose, and somebody's going to get 14 to 15 carries, somebody else 10 to 4 carries, uh, 10 to 11 carries, somebody else 7 to 8. And, and on the other side of the ball, you ask a defense, hey, how do you prepare for these guys? Well, just tackle whoever has the ball and try and get it. <laughs> yeah, good yeah, luck. Really. But it's Good just luck. unbelievable depth for the uh, Trojans. You know, Lewis, but they have a knack of not only finding the special qualities of each running back, but they also have a way of tailoring the offense around those special qualities. And keeping them happy. Yeah. I mean, those guys compete. They want the ball. They, they got to do what they wanted in high school as many times as they wanted carrying the football. And you know, earlier Gable, down left there, side. And Ron, earlier down here, uh, guys, when we saw McKnight dealing with the uh, turf toe issue, you know, for some programs, you'd be really concerned. But again, you have so much depth. They could give him all the time they needed to be tended to and decide whether or not to put him back out on the field. There you see him again. And they're just being able to rotate. I mean, it's just like a turnstile. They yeah. can rotate these running backs with such ease. And slightly different skill sets. McKnight's more of the speed guy, the route runner. Gable's probably the best combination. Johnson more of the hammer type guy. But Steve Sarkeesian has a full-time job figuring out a way to use them all. Time straight up the middle. 21 second half points for the Trojans. Eighth time this year they've scored 20 unanswered points in a football game. They may add to it with 323. Now this is a good point here. Pete Carroll said after the, the, the Cal game, he had a chance to add another touchdown. Instead, he ran four running plays at the end of the ball game right in the middle. He said, I'm not into style points. We don't do that because of the BCS. And they ended up, of course, dropping in the standings. But he said, I'm not going to do this just for style points. He's just going to run his basic game plan here. He said, we don't do that at 
NFC as Mark Tyler gets his first carry. Of course, his father, very famous, the Wendell Tyler of UCLA, all pro with the Rams and 49ers, getting his first carry tonight. Well, you talk about style points, and we saw the Trojan horse, how USC, what has to happen for them to try to get back into that, not just the BCS bowl picture, they're probably there if they finish out in some way, shape, or form. But they want to play for national championships right. if you come to USC, and they're going to need a lot of help. And remember, Oregon State still paves their own way. USC doesn't. Third down and five. They're just going to keep it on the ground. CJ Gable. And it'll be close to the first down. Once again, what possibly needs to happen. This is, once again, a basic scenario. Yeah, basically the Big 12 cannibalizes itself and the North upsets the South in a championship game. Really doesn't matter who wins the SEC championship. The SEC probably will be one side of that national championship package, but Oregon State has to lose. We'll see them in Tucson against Arizona next week, but they don't show any signs of slowing down at this point. Uh, first and goal from the three. Stanford keeping USC out of the end zone. Two minutes to play in the ball game. CJ Gable can't find the end zone. He already has one touchdown tonight. Sean Weiser, eight tackles for Stanford. And Ron, that other part of that BCS picture we haven't talked about is that scenario doesn't even eliminate potentially Oklahoma if they are not in right. the championship game. And if they beat, you know, uh, Texas Tech or yeah, Texas Tech next week, right? And then, and then, what then if Oklahoma they lose State. State. Yeah, so yeah. there are a lot of things that have to happen if you're a USC Trojan fan. And Texas is just sitting there waiting, just continuing to win. Second and goal from the three. Touchdown, USC Stephon Johnson. His second rushing touchdown of the evening. And what this represents when Johnson gets into the end zone is just really USC has imposed their will on Stanford's defense. Starting really at the end of that first half, we started to see a little bit of it, but we saw it big time here in the second half. And the extra point. It is good. USC on their way for another win. Going to nine and one, it all started. Brian Cushing after the tip pass with an outstanding interception from Tavita Pritchard. And Brian Cushing not only on the field, interesting, but also off the field as well. Brian Cushing, linebacker, University of Southern California. I probably have to say Lawrence Taylor and Ken Norton Jr. Probably a Bentley Coop. You know, there's a lot of girls out there, but I'd probably have to go with Jessica Alba. My last meal ever, I something my mom cooks. Big, tough Ryan Cushing, 6'3", 255, was a mama's boy. Yeah. <laughs> my last meal ever? Maybe. Ever? <laughs> like my last meal today or <laughs> next week or ever, yeah. Let my mom cook for me. He wants to go back to, 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 to New Jersey. Get some of that, maybe that's some of that good pasta back there. What a, what a great career he has had. Beat up last year, didn't play in the Stanford game in 07, was the co-MVP of the Rose Bowl last season. Only eight games last year because of injury, but he walked into the Pac-10 meetings this July and everybody thought he was a lineman. That is one big dude. Beeler on the kick. And here's Kimball. He's got some running room up over the 40 to the 44-yard line. Well, the only game that's going to bother this USC team is taking on Oregon State. The Quiz Rogers has the outstanding game. A lot of people said he was just hiding behind his offensive line. But you got to give credit to the entire Oregon State team. They even came up with a big interception late in the contest. They upset USC in Corvallis 27 to 21. That is the thorn in this team side. Fifteen to play. 
Hanford straight ahead running. That's Jeremy Stewart, his first carry. Let's go back to Oregon State for a second because, you know, Mike Riley had a lot of offense coming back, not so much defense, and everybody said, yeah, it's going to be an average year. I'm not even sure where he was picked in the conference, but Riley's team is very, yeah. very, Mike Riley does a great job at Oregon State getting players that fit not only his system, but fitting Corvallis. Yeah, I mean, they, Oregon State lost essentially all of their front seven on defense coming into this season. So it was going to take a little bit of time. Growing pains early. They lost one here at Stanford that they probably shouldn't yeah. have lost. And then offensively, Moivau at that quarterback position and Jaquiz Rogers at the running back position. Big brother James doing a lot of things as well. He had a big kickoff return today in that game, did James Rogers. So they're the real deal. And I think that would be a great matchup to see Oregon State and USC play again. <laughs> Depends where it would be if you're if you're Mike Riley. You, you'd want it to be playing for Dallas again. Final 30 seconds of the ball game. Lucas has some green in front of him. Heads towards the sideline, and he is going to be run out of bounds with 20 on the game clock. USC 415 total yards offense in this ball game. Once again, in the first half, they had 90. You know, Ron, with this USC team, their defense is so dominant, maybe mm -hmm. historically in in terms of the maybe the best scoring defense in all of college football. And and then offensively, I think they're a little bit passive at times, a little bit too conservative. They need to loosen up a little bit and see see what they if they can score some more points and then they'll be incredibly good. And Stewart is going to be stacked up in the final 14 seconds and that's probably going to do it. Stanford still one game away from being bowl eligible and you can see the rushing story only 46 rushing yards in the second half for the Stanford Cardinal. That's the blueprint run it on USC and Stanford could do it in the first half. They just didn't get anything done in the second half. And Jim Harbaugh called a timeout with six seconds left, and the crowd is booing. That's a message to Jim Harbaugh's team that we never give up. We have to finish games, and finish games, sometimes this wouldn't look like it means a whole lot to anyone else, but it means something to Jim Harbaugh and his players. Mm -hmm. You finish games, and that's what he has to teach his team. They're competitive now. And they're winning some games, about half that they, they're competitive in, but they need to learn how to finish games. They didn't finish the second half in this one. Well, Jim Harbaugh says, I'm not nearly the coach my dad was, or Mike Ditka, or Bo Schembechler. And again, he's young. He has some time to grow into yeah. Stanford drives in, this, in the first half. A couple of touchdowns and a field goal. They had only three punts. Second half, they had six punts and an interception. Not a good resume in the second half. No. Maybe this will be the final play. Here comes the blitz. Lucas into the flat. Pass is complete. With three seconds left. Warren Rulin on the reception. The true freshman out of Mission Viejo, California, only his second reception of the year. They want to put another seven on the board, don't they? Never give up. Gonna They're going to go kick a field, field goal. That's interesting. Okay. And the fans are booing. This, this is curious. This is interesting. Who calls a timeout now? Timeout. USC. Little timeout. gamesmanship going on right here between Pete Carroll and Jim Harbaugh. If you can do it, so will we. And he's got a little smile on his face. It will be hard to one up Pete Carroll, but if you're going to do it, Jim Harbaugh is your guy. <laughs> <laughs> this this is a guy that not only challenged Bo Schembechler, which he told us about yesterday. Yeah. He also challenged. He and Mike Ditka went at it too, if you remember, back in the old days. Yeah. And. Uh, Pete Carroll still has two timeouts left. So this game might It'd be over by extended 10 o'clock Pacific time. We talked about Jim Harbaugh has this this knack of kind of knowing what to say, whether it's 
at the wrong time or the right time, depending on what side you're on. And he has a tendency to get under people's skin, and this might be one of those things that USC remembers somewhere down the line. Well, now Alex Lucas comes back in. They're not kicking the field goal. This will be the final play. Looking, looking, throwing. Touchdown, Stanford. The final play of the game. They'll kick the extra point, and that'll be it. It'll be Jeremy Stewart on the touchdown reception. Check that. Austin Gunder on the touchdown reception. His first of the year, the senior out of Red Lion, Pennsylvania. Now they're saying forget the extra point. But a very interesting ending to this football game. They did score, so it'll be 45-23, the final, no extra point attempted. Harbaugh gets one more look up at the scoreboard. Mark Sanchez this evening, 11-17, 136, Lewis Johnson's whip, Pete Carroll. All right, thanks so much. Well, Coach, what does it mean for you to move to 9-1 and one now with two weeks to go? Well, I don't know about that stuff. I know what, what happened tonight was uh, our guys went in the locker room, decided we're going to win a football game, and they came out and did it, you know, and then really, really determined to get it done at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball like we thought we could, and they really did that, and it was really great. It was a great comeback win. Explain that, because you had 39 yards rushing in the first half, and you come out with 204, and then you shut them out. How, how did you make the switch? These guys these guys can do that, you know, and it, we, it was just kind of messed up in the first half. Well, they all knew, and we've been in this locker room before in a similar situation, and it's happened before, and so they just called, they called on it and they got it done. Make night with the toe issue uh, any problem as you look to those last two games now nah, we've got a couple weeks we'll get them well I thought I thought uh, you know I thought Sark did a great job you know see Sarkeesian the offensive coaches to get this thing cranked up like they did it was a great great job of adjusting and figuring it out really proud of these guys all right Pete thanks all right sir. Ron all right thank you very much Lewis Johnson Pete Carroll's team goes to nine and one a couple of games left Notre Dame and UCLA left on their schedule once again the final USC wins it 45 23 for Kelly Stoffer, Lewis Johnson, and our entire crew from Versus. I'm Ron Thulin. Thanks so much for watching. Now let's head to College Football Central Studios. Ted Robinson right here on Versus.